Hello and welcome to Motor Cult episode 65. I'm Eric Berger, joined as always by my co-host Ryan Sinitsky. Hello, sir. Who has two thumbs? Two thumbs. Indeed, yes. we also this week have back Ryan Yanich. Hello. What up? From What's uh, Top Rank International Vehicle Importers. Oh, they, right. they remember. Yeah, That's an unforgettable course, episode. It is. It was That was our first one in the mobile <laughs> podcast studio. <laughs> Yeah, we haven't done one in there since, actually. Yes, and this time I'm uh, interviewing Brian, sober. Um, <laughs> I think that, did that predate our questions? Uh, no, I think we asked you the questions. He did ask you the questions. Okay, cool, you got the questions. Okay, All right, so well, we got at least that he remembers that. Way. Good. So, Brian, what's new with you in the world of Top Rank? And now you're getting, I think, uh, the all cars that are 25 years old as of, what, 93? Are now yeah. legal for import, so we're going to be moving to 94 uh, next month, yep. which should be pretty yep. tight. Yeah, and we, uh, some pre-production 94 stuff, but we got the R33 Skylines, uh, the GTS, GTSC models, and uh, we've got the S14 Silvias now. Nice. That's cool. That is actually really cool. Yeah. I haven't cool. seen one of those in the flesh ever. Oh, yeah. The, uh, the right-hand drive ones or the American ones? Because, I mean, 240s existed. Yeah. Or maybe I'm thinking S15. You yeah. think the S15. The one with the triangular so, brake light? Right, which yeah. S15. Yeah. Oh, okay. Out. I've seen S14s, I guess. With the Evo 2 coming up. So yep. we're getting ready for some cool things. Yeah, it's, fair enough. Well, it's it's like as of nine as of next year, I think like almost every one of the big tuner chassis are going to be available because then you're going to get the EG Civic. Well, they were, they've been, yeah, they've been them. available. Uh, uh, DC Integra's. Right. Yeah. The, uh, the S14s. Um, yeah. It, then that we're actually coming out of Toyota making cool cars. So it's like, we're also getting the BMW E36 wagon. Oh yes, yeah. True. Yes. E36 yeah. wagon. My buddy yeah. Neil just imported one of those like, uh, last week. It must've been a really early production to huh. get it in already, but the right twin goes. Mm. Have, yep, as of as of last year, I think Shh, actually we should just import a Twingo for Jana. Yeah. Jana really wants one. I think oh, it'd be yeah. so cool. It'd be so cheap. I mean, the import cost would be like three times what the car costs. I was actually I was like <laughs> I was doing actual research about Twingo, and uh, the one I'm gonna want is gonna be the 2000 Twingo because mm-hmm. they had a 75 horsepower engine as opposed to the 50 horsepower. Oh, engine. whatever, it's fine. Yeah, but then you we also had, a, you, had a, you had additional colors and stuff that were available and a bunch of really cool options. Are you really going to make Jana wait another six years no, I don't for a think Twingo? So. Well, I mean, it, I don't know. It depends because I'll be importing my first car after we get a house. So okay. Then, then I will be slowly changing my collection to all imported Toyotas, and Jana will be just only driving French cars for the rest of our life. Or micro cars. Yeah, or micro cars. <laughs> and micro French cars. <laughs> Extremely small French cars, yes. So, um, <clears throat> let's just start with the one topic we moved over from last sure. week. Yep. Um, Nissan. Uh, this is actually part of why I wanted you to come by. Uh, they're, uh, they've been doing the R32 Skylines, doing reproduction parts, and now they're expanding to the 33s and 34s. I was wondering... Does that, does that have any effect with like importation and stuff? Like, I, I imagine that would probably help with like you know the sales pitch of like, hey, buy an R thirty three. Yeah, um, you know, so the thirty two stuff, um, they're expanding that product line too. Okay. Uh, for more stuff that is available, um, you know, through partnership with Autec. Okay. So um, that's nice. I don't know how many people are really taking advantage of it, but yeah. hopefully a good amount will. Um, you know, what I'm hoping it helps kind of alleviate is, um, you know, we've gone from this evolution of, uh, people that just want a car. Like when we first started importing the R32s, people just wanted an R32. Like that a, G- it, a GTST right? auto? Four, right. No, like <laughs> it a was four like, cylinder automatic G, like GXS or whatever a base model was. Oh my God, I can get a Skyline, I'll take it. Yeah. Right. You yep. know, and then same thing with the GTRs, you know, people right. wanted GTRs. So they were just like, whatever, just Yes. I'll take it. You know, mm-hmm. oh, I need to replace everything. Cool. Cool with that. I got it. You know, <laughs> no to, problem. Right. Um, to people really being like, oh, unless this car is totally original or if people ask for this craziest stuff and that's fine. But like, you know, it's become a collector's market. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, which everybody kind of thinks, oh, well, the, you know, these guys are selling Skylines for 40 grand, 50 grand, seven, I sold them yeah. for 73,000, you know, that's astronomical, but is it, you know, no, because the thing is the price is going perfect. up in Japan. And I think that these parts are just supporting that, you yeah. know, it's really becoming a thing where guys are going to start restoring these cars. You're going to see full restorations of skylines, mm-hmm. you know, and a lot of these cars are going to get put back to stock, complete OEM, and it's going to become that 
collectible style of car. For sure. You know, but it drives like the tuner enthusiast people kind of nuts because I mean, no, they can't get it. Right. Exactly. You know, yeah. so, but that's kind of comes with the territory. But I mean, the tuner enthusiast people can still get the quote unquote lesser cars that have the same body and do it that way. Cause I mean, like with the E30 M3 crowd, like the people right. that really lost after those things, mm. they just buy a 325i. Right. And they just make that fast. Mm-hmm. And awesome. Yeah. Cause that's just like all they can afford. Well, I think and I kind of get that. Well, the GTSTs are going up as well. Not not no. as fast, but it's well, kind of like I would buy one of those over a GTR. Yeah. It's, a, it's a trickle down effect. So, what yeah. it is, is, you know, the GTR pricing went up so much that people start to look for the GTSs, you know, GTSTs. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. well, it pushes the prices on the turbo GTSs. Yep. Well, the prices get high in that. Now people start to look for the GTS, mm-hmm. start to suppress the price on it that. It drags all of them know, up. So, it pulls all of them up, yep. you know, which isn't our fault, right. you know, but like I was telling Ryan, mm-hmm. you know, you get these people that are like, Oh, you know, you guys are just trying to make killing, or you know, these cars aren't. It's like, well, you know, it, it is well, a business. I can, I can but find a Supra for six grand. Like, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not the one raising the prices in Japan. Maybe a Mark you know? III. So right, yeah. <laughs> so um, <laughs> overall, I think it'll be good for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, it opens up, um, you know, some accessibility for certain people that are concerned. I mean, it's a question we get all the time. Like, what if something breaks? Right. Yeah. You know, there's always a way. Well, you right. you you also have that crowd of the collector people. Mm -hmm. So these are people that were, you know, they were hot on like the Ferrari 308s and the 911s like five years ago when they Mm -hmm. were blowing up. And now that the Japanese cars are blowing up, you know, they may not necessarily, they're like, I I always thought they were kind of cool, but they're like, they never really gave them the time of day. And now they're giving them the time of day. Well, so with the 33 and 34, uh, you know, they're thinking, okay, what parts are we going to, what, what are we going to release? Yeah. You know, and which brings the R32 back in. And what a lot of people don't realize is that some of those little parts are super expensive. Mm-hmm. You know, when you see oh, okay, oh, yeah. a GTR that has really nice window trim on it. Yeah. I mean, that's seven to $900 a side. Oh yeah. It's, it's Mercedes has been doing this for years. And yep. it's like, yeah, you can get that little plastic, you know, garnish that goes around the mm-hmm. window switch for your, you know, like your 300 SL. It will also be a $4,500 piece of garnish or like, if you need the uh manual windshield washer squirter valve for a 1976 240d totally available right. little tiny thing that size with the check valve in it 76 dollars. yeah yeah it, i mean so it's expensive i'm you know i'm, I'm okay with that because like, i'm glad that they're making as it as long as we can still get the parts is if i can get the part i'll pay whatever and you know more power to them i feel like that we, we should support them for doing that because mm-hmm. it's just the fact that they're doing it that. cost them a ton of money mm-hmm. to find a uh, manufacturer to do it yes. to stock it to make it to ship it i mean i get it i get it well and then you know the thing is at the end of the day uh, when you're at a car show yeah and you know it used to be yeah like skylines like you have r32 instant trophy mm-hmm. like now it's like <laughs> right. well now mm-hmm. there's like eight r32s at the show mm-hmm. there's like two Honda Civics yeah. <laughs> and it's like people are all stepping up <laughs> yeah like which, which R32 wins and it's going to be the one with the window trim it's going to well, be the, the super nice the thing one is that they bought for 40 grand. right I mean it, it's yeah. like I said it's becoming a collector's market and a, people can like it or they can not like it you know but that's how it is I mean in R34 there's one up on the screen right now but yeah, you know in R34 in Japan you want a nice one mm-hmm. I mean they're already seventy to ninety thousand dollars yeah so then you have to do import costs fixing anything uh, now that's yeah. eight, eight years from now is when people are going to be looking to buy them you know yep. what i mean so yep. imagine what the price is going to be then you know so that's the thing is you know people these cars are going to come to the u.s they're going to be 120 140 150 thousand and yeah. everyone's going to say oh well these guys are making a killing but that's not the cars are already expensive right, right now, so i mean yeah. of course there's going to be profit margin because it's a business but like you're right. saying the car for you to purchase it in another country to begin with that's yes. a reasonable example right. is going to cost a damn fortune well, i think another thing that a lot of people are failing to, to realize like if you know you get these people like yeah like the, like i can get a super for six grand like stuff like that yeah. it's like yeah yeah you, you could like 10 years ago <clears> but <throat> with the way i would handle it it'd be like yeah have you ever seen what the price of a porsche 912 is now right. Like nobody wants a nine twelve. Oh, they do now. They they want the original nine eleven, but they yeah. can't afford it. Right. So they get the nine twelve, and they realize actually the nine twelve is not that bad. It's kind yeah. of a cool car. That's the right. same thing as the you know the GTR is pulling up GTSTs. Exactly. Nine yeah. twelves are going through the roof now too because yeah, exactly. nobody can afford a vintage nine eleven. Right. Yeah, and th- and that's that's the thing is I, I feel like it, you know just a lot of people really just need to realize like you know what if you want to get on this like you need to be buying like R three four like. Right now, right. what do you and sit storing in Japan it? Yeah, for right. Like 10 which years. we do. You know, yeah. we offer that. I mean, it's right. 
you know, two to three. And that's huge. That's what, that's what I love about top. So, I mean, you can do that, but you know, what I always try to remind people is like, my job isn't to like, I'm not, a broker that works for you. I'm not your real estate agent. <laughs> yeah. My job isn't to find oh you. Oh my God. You know what I mean? Really? Like, that, you know, like, do you want the car or not? Like, yeah. it, oh, you're, you can you're, find you're, one cheaper? Good. That, yeah. yeah. You're, you're, nobody, you're, there's not a law in place <laughs> that says you have to buy your car from this one company. Like, no. if, you, if there's one cheaper in Japan and you're comfortable blindly wiring money to a guy that doesn't speak your language, that's in a city you've never been to and trust it's going to be put on a boat and it's going to arrive mm. and everything is going to go smoothly. And when you get it, that car <laughs> is going to have complete service and maintenance done on it with a phone number that you can call and talk to anytime you have a problem, then do that. You know, <laughs> exactly. It's exactly that. Cause yep. it's, it's one of those things. I do not trust buying a car from Wisconsin without well, seeing it. <laughs> that being said, Wisconsin's way shadier than Japan. Eh, there's parts of Japan, but <laughs> probably not the parts of the no, Clean R34 GTRs. I, I think it's more, it's more, it's more the the fat. What you were saying is, you know, having these people that are like, oh, it's just like buying a car from Los Angeles. It's like kind of not really because no. like let's put it this way: I do this for a living, and yeah. I have for years. Yeah, exactly. And when I buy a personal car, I don't do it on my own. Yeah, you right. know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, it's, it's like, like <laughs> so it's like, all right, well, let's just let's look at it this way. Like, when you go, when you buy a car, let's say you're buying like an A86 from California, mm -hmm. you've not seen it. Well, okay, is it all numbers matching? No. Okay, where's the engine from? Oh, the, the engine was from a car in Florida that was imported from Japan from some guy, smudged all the paperwork. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it's stolen. Yeah. Okay, well now your car's getting crushed. Yeah. Let's say that but, doesn't happen. Let's say you got the original engine; it's actually in good condition. Well, yeah, you got it onto the truck. Cool, but you don't know the shipping company. Yeah. Well, you don't know the shipping company. The car wasn't strapped down correctly. Yeah. It slammed the front right. end into I mean, the truck. there's risk everywhere. Yeah, it's it's, just... and when you're dealing with a company like right. Top Rank, like you have somebody that's going through this. They've vetted all of this, mm. like extreme I've, vetting. I've gone through, uh, yeah, exactly, extreme vetting. <laughs> I love that term, like, by the way. Just like working like with classic Volkswagens, I get so many people that like buy like a Vanagon from like yeah. California or something, or from like like down south, and they get it, and like when it arrives, like cars I, are never as described. No, they're never as described, but then they're like super pissed because when the tow truck driver had never heard of a Vanagon, strapped it down, strapped it to the radius arm. Oh, and now the car's got like five degrees of toe on the left yeah. front wheel because well, they had to strap it So there's down. a saying that like, I'm, I'm a Ferrari enthusiast, I guess. Yeah, I love Ferraris and I love the brand. Yeah. But, you know, um, friends of mine that have them have always told me, if you can't afford a new Ferrari, you can't afford an old Ferrari. No, that's exactly. not true. Well, okay. You can turn a wrench. Master yes. technician, right? But I mean, you know, for... <laughs> Somebody that's not, right? You for know, me. Somebody that I wants grant, a car. I'm not the normie. Right. Yeah, yeah, for your average person, right? <laughs> you know, buying a Ferrari that's out of warranty yeah. that you don't know the history of and right. don't have someone to maintain it's it. It's generally a pretty bad idea. It's a risk. And the same is true for a lot of Japanese cars. Yeah. You know, if you can't afford a $30,000 GTR that has all of the maintenance done from a reliable company, mm -hmm. definitely. Then can't you can't afford, afford the twenty three thousand dollar one that's from some kid in Canada mm -hmm. that has you don't know anything about. Field. You know, so because you know you can. I mean, it's yeah. There's a guy here locally that bought a GTR from somebody else and got it and found out that you know there was double digits worth of rust repair. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean, it's at that point, what I, I assume you mean like four figures. Four figures, yeah, d double. Ten. No, like 10K plus. 10K. Okay. Five, yeah. five, five figures. figures. Yeah. yeah, five, sorry. Double, yeah. double digits. We, we, I meant we, like. hours of rest. We <laughs> both said it really bad. Double, double $99. <laughs> double digits for me come before the comma. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, you know, that's. No, it, it, and I think it's, that, that's, that's a real thing that you really have to worry about is, yeah. you know, it's it, there's nothing wrong with mm -hmm. importing a car. It's just like. It really pays. Yeah. It's like going sure. to court. Like, are yeah. you gonna? Oh, are you God, really gonna yeah. represent yourself right. in court? You exactly. save so like, much money just, by paying that person yeah. to, yeah, yeah, to make your life not shitty. Yeah, yeah. like right. just, yeah, like you just you go up front, and just do it. Like and, when I bought my Mazda Five, I bought it from a dealership because everything had been gone through. I didn't buy my Mazda. Yeah, buy Happy Ryan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I didn't buy my Mazda yeah. Five from like <laughs> Joe Schmo because I found I, there was the identical van in Oklahoma that was like. For half the price, 
But at the same time, it's like, yeah, it's half the price, but I also want my car to like work. Right. And it's local. So yeah. here's how I'm going to bring this full circle back to Do the it. parts, right? I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. Is yeah. that just because parts are available now doesn't make the car cheaper. No. Right? It doesn't even make the parts cheaper. You know what I mean? Like, you're buying OEM, like, parts. It's going to be expensive. You know, people shouldn't expect, you know, that that window trim, yeah, it might be $700 a side right now. That doesn't mean Nissan's is going to come out and it's going to be $99 or something. You know what I mean? Like, we're still not talking mass production Nissan Leafs or Versas or something Classically supported OE parts generally are more than Here, the aftermarket version. Here's a right. perfect example. So this is something I'm doing with at work right now. I got 82 van again, air cooled. Uh, no factory support. There has not been factory support since 1992 mm. on a Volkswagen, which means parts do not exist for this vehicle. Well, I'm sorry. Um, the OEM parts are total shit for those anyway. But so yeah, the um, the, the water cooled van again have parts available. The air cooled type twos have parts available. The air cooled van again do not. The don't parts don't exist for them. Well, it's got this one little cable that does the flap that goes between the defroster and the feet. That cable is broken. So just like an H back yeah, Bowden cable. And in the th- dash. This is this is where it's super important to have OEM parts availability. Is yeah, if Volkswagen had that part, it would be a three hundred dollar cable yeah. that's two feet long. But you know what? That's going to exist because right now I have spent a week and a half searching for this one cable for this one Vanagon. It does not exist. This guy does not have any. You'd be better off getting a custom made. It, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm, I'm gonna have to do. But it's gonna be like it's just gonna be insane. And even the way it's fit, like it's super hard to find something custom made. You know? Yeah. I think with the skyline parts, this is just my vision, right? If I'm yeah. thinking <laughs> five years out, what I think we're gonna see. I'm scared. Right? Is a super nice R32 GTR right now. Right at Barrett Jackson or something like that, seventy plus. We've yeah. seen it for the best one. It's yeah. sold. We know that, right? Yeah. When guys start going through and making the investment and in buying a nice car and fully restoring it with parts that are available, whether it's a thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four from Nissan, mm-hmm. the prices are. Gonna go triple digits. Oh yeah, I totally. guarantee you. No, we're gonna see an R32 sell for a, over a hundred grand. It's only in a the period of time. Years. It's only time. Oh, That's all sure. it is. Yeah. And well, even um, and our car extend to that. Maybe not triple digits. The AutoZam, sure. because they're already expensive. Yeah. Well, when, when we were at JAI, because yeah. uh, we were in, you were there too. Um, it, I'm not sure if you noticed, like all the people are flocking to that mm-hmm. Mazda Speed AutoZam that yeah. was there, but like. There was a Mazda Speed AutoZam, and then there was a C10 Hakoska GTR, mm. and you could not pay somebody to go look at the GTR. <laughs> Everybody was going to the AutoZam because it looks like a tiny F40. Right. And so, yeah, things like that. I think a lot of the cars these collector people are going to latch onto like, are just going to explode yeah, in price. It's, right and now, it's, it, is the, it is the time you are, going, you are seeing it with NSXs. Yep. You're seeing it with Supras. Super pricing is insane. Oh you know, my like, god! It's as people that are asking a hundred thousand plus for their car and they're getting it. Mm-hmm. Did you, you know? And the, did you see the automatic super low mile one that sold about six months ago on BAT for like ninety two grand? Yeah, Ugh. it's it's but the thing it's is, it's one sixty, like, right? I mean, the thing is that it's not that you could sit here all day and say the car isn't worth it, but the it, it doesn't matter. Doesn't dispute the fact that the car sold. Right. I mean, somebody bought that car, right? And obviously saw the value in it mm-hmm. and that same somebody probably isn't going to take a loss on it in the future probably no, not you know you're, so you're absolutely correct and it's it's just like a lot of the old porsche stuff you know when it was happening everybody was saying this is nuts that car isn't worth that i used to be able to buy this car for nine grand i used right. to be able to buy this and then it was i used to be right. able to buy this car <laughs> for 15 then it was i could buy this car for 20 then it was i could buy this car for 70 <laughs> then yeah. it was i could used to be able to buy this car for 100 and right. now like great you know what I mean? Like somebody yep. bought this piece of land yeah. at one point in history for a yep. dollar. Oh, I'm sure. You know, at some point, great. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, like, it's not worth a dollar anymore. I don't get to go back to the guy that owns this building and say, "I'll give you two dollars for it." You just double. Like, it. look, it yeah. sold for yeah. a dollar back yeah, in is. 1841. Yeah. Uh, you're asking. I can't believe you're asking 250 times. Well, yeah. <laughs> 
Two hundred fifty thousand. No, it's the same thing as stocks. Three like, digits, man. Three you, digits. You, have like, you have like that the IPO of like Tesla. Like, what was that? It's like fifty, sixty bucks or something. And now it's like I don't know. Yeah, now like Tesla's Tesla stock is just through the roof. Right? Mm-hmm. It, in, regardless of what people try to do, short selling it. Because yep. everybody tries to short sell it. Well, the sh- it, unless everybody believes a short seller, it does not matter. And the thing is, with cars, it is very hard to convince people that want a car that mm-hmm. it's not worth it. Because I'm the sort of person where if I had unlimited money, I would absolutely drop you know $100,000 on the world's best Isuzu Impulse. You could not tell me otherwise. Well, I mean, we're talking about rare vehicles, too. Well, no, that, that's right. what I'm talking about. But it's like... What you're dealing with here is yep. it's more than just a widget. It's not yep. cars are notoriously hard to short sell, and with cars like this, like Skylines and stuff like that, you're dealing with people's emotions, mm-hmm. and they're getting oh, into yeah. it, and they're like, "This is awesome. This right. is totally worth it for me. I have enough money. I need this car. I want it when I was a kid, and I can buy it. Right. And you know what? This other guy wants it for eighty-seven thousand dollars. Screw that guy. I'm buy it for ninety-two. Mm-hmm. Like stuff yep. like that. The thing is, what I've come to learn is the person that thinks a car is too expensive yep. is always going to think it's too expensive. Yes. Yeah. You know, because. True. All they're thinking about is what the price used to be, and that's right. it. If you taught, if you treated everything like that, <clears throat> you'd be dead. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's true. I, honestly, like, this milk it, is too expensive. Exactly, right? Like this water house. is what you know. Like I my, used to be able to buy a gallon of milk for ninety-two cents. Exactly. What the hell? You know, it's, <laughs> no, and, that, that's a that's a good yeah. way to put it. It's like sure. if you if you did go by that like all the time, you would just die. Oh yeah, exactly. I mean, like. It. And that's the thing, too, is I get so many people that say, well, these cars used to be this. Well, great. Like, if I could go out and buy anything I wanted for what it used to be, I would have cars, like, I would have everything I ever wanted. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, a a guy I work with, Sean Morris, loves to share this photo of an ad for a Ferrari 250 GTO that was for sale for, like, $7,500. $7,500. Yes, I remember that. And you know what I mean? Like, expensive yep. car. Exactly, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't get to go to Barrett Jackson and say, well, <laughs> that sounds a little steep because it once sold for $7,500. Like, well. That's not 1971 anymore. Exactly. No, it's not. And, you know, in this this Countach I really wanted for $100,000 when I was 15 is now $700. i am not going to try and go find some dude with a Countach and say, hey, man. You know, in 2005, this is a hundred thousand dollar car. He's like, yeah, cool. In 2005, your house, your parents' house is worth right. more. <laughs> the thing is, I think the thing is with the skylines is that, you know, I think there's a lot. I don't want to say more eyes on it than there was when the Porsche stuff was happening. Like, right. you know, like you look back now. I would, I would say you, now there is. You yeah. look back now and you say, oh man, like I missed the boat. Oh. On the Porsches, on the Testarossas, whatever. But right now, we're watching this happen. Like, yes. Absolutely. I, when I started working here, we were selling nice Skyline GTRs mm-hmm. for in the low teens. I remember. Jeez. I remember you know what I mean? when they and first now, came here. Yeah. Now, yeah. I mean, like. <laughs> Dude, I, I remember, I, yeah, I remember, I remember when they when, were like 17, 18 for a pretty solid I remember one. when right. we first met. Like, we were talking about like, yeah, right. You could get like an R32 for $24,000. I'm like, yeah, it would be yeah, really Yeah, and cool. now it's, also, it, it just doesn't, it's not there. Right. You know, and that's, and it's not because. You know, we just decided to start selling them more because more people are buying them. You right. know, I mean, if I could sell them for less, I, it'd be really cool be if one company mm-hmm. had a monopoly that was able to do that. Right, but the thing is, it doesn't yeah. exist. Comcast Skyline sales. Yeah, you know, exactly. like it, it, it just doesn't exist. You know, and we're seeing it with the R thirty fours. You know, uh, people have wanted one forever, and yep. right now your options are, you know, well, not, not even any right right now, but you know, maybe a year, two years ago, you probably could have picked up a pretty nice one for fifty. Yeah. Ish and stored it, right? Yeah. And now, you know, last year we had a pretty nice one for sale that we were asking, I think, like 60 or 62 for, and it, someone bought it and stored it. You know, and now that same car is probably 70. And honestly, if it keeps jumping up that much, it which it will, I mean, there's around 10,000 oh, yeah, of but these like you're G- saying, GTRs. By you the know, time like, these are importable to the right. USA, mm-hmm. uh, GTR R34 well, not, is not, going to be 120, Not only that, 40. how many 911s are there? Like, there's... I mean, a, hundreds a of thousands. bunch. There yeah. has to be a hundred. Oh, right. There has to be hundreds of thousands of nine elevens in the world. Right. Yeah, and those are, you know, everybody, you know, was losing their mind over those. And these are skylines. Like mm-hmm. this is a car that's like as much hype as the nine eleven used to. Mm-hmm. Right. And, but there's way it's a much more finite right. resource. It, yeah. well, so you have supply and demand, mm-hmm. and that supply is not getting any higher well, ever. The thing is. Again, to go with the trickle-down effect, the 34, you know, the people that are realizing 
like just coming to grips with the fact that you know what, as much as I want one, mm-hmm. I'm I'm never gonna own one. Right. Right. Because for some people, a hundred and fifty thousand dollars is a number that it's just it's not gonna happen. Yep. It's just not. All right. right. So, you know, so then they start to say, Okay, well, what's a thirty three gonna be? You know what I mean? Or yeah. what's a, what can I get a thirty two for now? Because you're not really settling. You're just accepting a different generation of the car because right. you want a GTR. Right. You, know, you want a Skyline. You want the GTR. And it, it just is what it is. You know what I mean? Like that's. I think the, the, the biggest thing for a, a person making that sort of exception in their mind is like, what can I get now? Like right. you were saying. Because yeah, like, sure. for some people, because... even, like, even if it's not a cost barrier, it's like, well, it's seven years. Right. What's what's my life gonna look like in seven years? What's yeah. the car's value sure. gonna look like in seven years? What are the logistics gonna look like? Yeah. Maybe I won't be able to do it then. Yeah. Right. I and can do this now. That's so. how you ended up with your Ferrari. <clears throat> we have people. Like, yep. Yeah. We have people that have pulled the trigger on an R34. You know, I, we get calls. It's not often, but we get calls from people that say, "You know what? I've been watching the 34 market. I'm worried that a seventy thousand dollar car now is gonna be a hundred and forty thousand dollar car if I wait." Mm-hmm. It, 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 that's a very reasonable thing to worry and about. I think so. Absolutely. Right. It's almost and a certainty. The thing is, it's not going to be less than 70. Right. So people are saying, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I mean, again, I don't know what storage costs for seven years in Japan, but it's probably less than that. Right. Price exactly. You know what I mean? You're it's, talking for indoor storage, yeah. 280 a month. That's US. not that bad. I mean, that's not bad. So, okay. Tack, let's call it $17,000 onto that. Yep. You know what I mean? Okay, great. I mean, you're $87,000 into a car that is now 100 when it gets here yep you know uh, it's, it's gonna be at least eighty seven thousand yeah, dollars you know right. so and that's that's the thing you know so there's people that are doing it and people that are recognizing it and some people are going to keep them forever mm-hmm. and have that car and just be fortunate to have it and some people i have no doubt the minute that car gets here i are going to post it for sale oh oh totally. for sure yeah. yeah that's it's speculators it's like right. the same thing happened with duesenberg's you know, they'd find they there'd be guys that go around like yeah, thank you. They'd go around the Midwest back in the eighties and with like car trailers and just pick up Duesenbergs out of barns. A get them from people that had no idea what was going on with them. Mm-hmm. And go pick them up and then yeah, even unrestored would just take them immediately to auction, sell them and make a ton of money. Right. And um I I guess I am just gonna segue this on a little bit. Um when we had been shoe on from Japanese nostalgia car. Mm-hmm. Um, we Another were ta- mobile yeah. podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were talking about the collector market blowing up on Japanese cars, and with especially with Nissan and everything being featured with on RMMR, um, the Rolex uh, historics race at Laguna Seca. Uh, we were talking about like how the other models are might also blow up as well, and I'm wondering what's your take on that. So stuff like the GTSRs and stuff like that, like the not necessarily the R32s, but the other models that yeah. once you dig into Nissan's past, you go, oh, this car is like just as cool. So yeah, mm-hmm. GTSR, these, um, you know, the Pulsar GTIRs and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Have right. you seen those go up? Like, have you seen any people like go from like, you know what, I wanted a Skyline, but you know what, this is a different Skyline or this is a different model. I think this is really cool, and I think this will also go up in value. Have you seen anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I think people that are brand loyalists are into that idea, you know, but um, I would say for the most part, you know, when we're selling something to somebody, yeah. it's they're pretty they want specifically that. into that yeah. idea, you know. So, um, you know, the GTR, some people are just like, hey, I've got, it, sometimes it's just off the wall, like, I've got this grand national. And I've always wanted something that's a interesting rival to it. Yeah. So I need an oh, R32 okay. GTR. You know what I mean? Like that makes which is, sense. Right. Makes you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like I've never heard those two cars compared I, hey, to each well, other. No, like, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I get it. So I get you, you want you want the, the, the competitor to the car. So right. like yeah, you the know, guy you with the nine eleven wants the, the competition that yeah. never was, maybe. Yeah. Right, that never Some was. Similar you know, so year, like, turbocharged so six cylinder. The reason that I brought that up is um and I don't I don't remember who wrote this. Um I think it was Haggerty. Okay. Um, they did that. They took one of our Nismo R32s, mm-hmm. um, and the guy actually ended up buying it that wrote the article. Um, and he had actually, I think that was Haggerty. I think national, I remember. Yeah, reading and that. he wrote an article comparing the two of them. Huh. And it really, it's, it's as weird as this sounds, is like 
it drew some people out of the woodworks that were like, hey, you know, like. It, no, no, it makes sense because yeah. these are people that otherwise wouldn't be paying attention to the right, car. You know, and then, yeah. you know, the other thing, too, that we see a, a good portion of the market doing is guys that own R35s yeah. buying R32s. Well, yeah, because that that's makes way sense. better. You can right. get a manual. You, you want a little bit of both. <laughs> you know, they look cool next to each other in the garage. It's cool to have both, you know. And so, you know, there's stuff like that. People get cars for different reasons, but. Have you seen you people know. that like would uh, like they get started with R thirty twos? Have you seen them people that come from like something like a Porsche or something like you know something outside oh, yeah. of that, and then just like go down the rabbit hole, and then just yes. like end up with weird stuff? Yes, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like <laughs> I know switch make preference. quite a few customers of ours that have nine elevens or had nine elevens and went to the Japanese side of things. And you now know. they're like rolling around in like a pow. <laughs> you know, but I mean, you know, people Can't want different really. things for different reasons. I mean, we get a lot of customers that honestly are, they grew up watching Initial D and they made some money. Yeah. And now they mm-hmm. want that car. Or, you know, Need for Speed Underground was like their jam, you know, and now like. <laughs> now the R34. The, is... They're getting their first good amount of, you know, money coming in and they're saying, you know, this is a car that I can have. You know, and every generation has that. Oh, yeah. You know, like. It's a guy, and same thing with guys retiring. You know what I mean? Like you see a lot of people retire and they're finally going to get that Mustang or that Camaro, you know, that they've always wanted, you know, or, you know, a guy makes a little bit of money and it's just my dream car it was always a Ferrari Testarossa and now you can get one. You know I mean? It pushes the value on things because people that can afford stuff. It can, was pretty well, much well, everything well, I own is one of those cars from my generation that right. nobody can afford yet. What, what exactly, was yeah. what was the poster car 30 years ago? Like something like that. Like I mean, what, what was the car that you had on your so wall, on my were, wall like, 30 like, years ago? Like stuff like that. Yeah. Like, that's I mean, I had a Ferrari Testarossa was like a dream car of mine mm-hmm. and then I guess from like the Japanese side of things, I mean the Supra for me was always like like the car, you know, mm-hmm. even more so than the GTR. You know, for me, it was just yeah, like me too. The, Su- the Supra was just one of those cars where you're just like, oh man. You know, like, <laughs> I had about like 800 Lowrider magazine centerfolds, and then directly in front of my bed, yeah, I had a, yeah. I had a, I had a Mark IV Supra. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. You know, so it's it's one of those things that, and, you know, it's different for everybody. You know, and we have some people that call and say like, I've always, always, always wanted a 3000 GT, like. <laughs> Okay, I mean, but yeah, who am I to say no? You know what I mean? Like, I, trust me, man, I like that car. I think no, it's des- yeah. the design yeah, of it. Yeah, but we got those here. Right, I know, right? But, you yeah, know, but people they want, want the GTO. People want the GTO oh, or, fine. you know, or it's... And the I thing played too Gran is, Turismo too. I want the GTO. Right. Actually, <laughs> but a lot of it, too, is that, you know, if you want, if you want a really nice 3000 GT VR4 here, yeah. I mean, there's not a ton of them. No, you gotta, exist, what no. you what you got to do is get a stealth RT, man. Sure. Woo! You know, yeah, you but, get too no. wicked from Aquatine. You know, and Force. same thing with like the 300 <laughs> ZX. You know, finding a superb. That's so hard to do. Right. Find they, a nice no, Japan, two twin turbo. But in Japan, you can find just immaculate cars. Yeah. Because they're respected. They're well taken care of. You know what I mean? And it's here. It's like been passed down to pass what, down to pass what down. What does a, a decent stock stock twin turbo Z run in Japan? Or sorry, let me preface that. What would that car run imported here? <laughs> imported here? Yeah. So really nice one. Uh you're probably around like ten. Yeah. They're really cheap. I can get that or my EG uncle's Civic. looking for one of those, so yeah. maybe we should have a chat. So, you know, like a like uh, and again, you know, same thing kind of with like the GTOs and you know, some of those cars that people aren't lined up around the block for. Yeah. You know, aren't pushing a premium in Japan, right? Now, and if, that's the thing that car never really got the cult following. The Mark no, IV Supra th- did, or if I'm in Japan GTR. and I own an R32, yeah, about right now is the time for me to sell it. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> or any time after this, for the most part, you yeah. know. And that's the thing is because I know that somebody in the U.S. is good. gonna pay thirty plus for my car. Oh, for sure. So, for sure. Um, but if I own, I, you know, I just literally pretty much anything else yeah. I mean, other than like an NSX or a Supra or an RX-7. You know, if I own the world's nicest Honda Beat, mm-hmm. it doesn't really matter. Yeah. You know what I mean? If I have the cleanest Suzuki Cappuccino on the did streets. You sell, did you sell a Beat yet? No. We're basically <laughs> giving it away at this point. I will um, take it. I, I will trade you my Mazda 5 for it. We Honestly, we <laughs> might do that. <laughs> but, um, you know, but... <laughs> I'm going to see Ryan roll up in a beat next week, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to be like, this is a terrible decision. <laughs> but, 
you know, I can't fit anything. Some in of this. those cars just, you know, are, are popular in Japan. They just aren't. The sellers aren't no, asking the premium. That I, I think that something like those, those like, if you're a perspective, mm-hmm. if you want, like, if you were super into, you know, the yeah. super, the the initial D, Gran Turismo, Need for Speed kids. Yeah. Like, if you were super into a car like a R34 and you just cannot afford it, mm-hmm. think about, like, what the number two boss drove in, like, the game. Or, like... Yeah. like, like <laughs> but, you know, the thing like, is, is... You get a really cool car right. still. And that's that's how I live my life. I'm like, but, I, I want an R32, but it's like, you know what else is really cool is R31. But, I mean, there's still value. I mean, there's, yeah, there's, there's undervalued ton, cars yeah. right yep. now. That you can still get if and that's you're building exactly a collection, about, you know, yeah. and, um, you know, and there's overvalued stuff. I mean, in in my opinion, like some of the Honda stuff, you know, we had a guy come to us. He's like, I want an okay Prelude. Yeah, those like are a fifth gen. I do not understand why somebody would pay anything more than five grand for a Prelude. Like that's beyond me. But at you auction, know what? Good, good at you. auction, they were selling a million to one point four million yen. So you know, let's call it ten to fourteen thousand at auction. Then right. you got to import it here one. for like five grand. No, not even for the oh, best for one. like an all right one. For like an all right one, you know. And same thing with like some of the Civics, like the what e- gym yeah, prelude? EGs. Oh my god, the EGSIRs. Yeah. Why would you even, man? Well, you can make the car, but like. you know the thing is, and that's not. <laughs> and people see the value. We've sold them before. I've sold a pretty nice EGSIR for eighteen thousand dollars before. That's you know what I mean, and that's. And, well, and I mean, the guy, like, he didn't I, I even bat an eye it. at it. He called and said, I need this car. I'll wire you the cash. And he just took it, and he was super happy with it. Now, some people were like, oh, you guys are nuts. You guys are nuts. You guys are nuts. Listen, man, that was an expensive car. We paid a ton of money for that car at auction. Well, we took a huge risk on it, and it paid off. You I, know, somebody bought it, but they're expensive. Cars are expensive in Japan. I think that's another example. Kind of like, that's kind of the inverse of some of these other cars like beats and stuff sure. where it's like, it is worth way more in Japan than it is here because in America civics for whatever fucking reason, I still don't get it. Just, they do not have mm-hmm. the name that they should. Right. And that's a car. Cause there's where, not the culture here. No, it's, it's not. I it, it, think it's one of those things like that's like the reverse of like right. a, an undervalued car where it's like, in Japan, like they get it, like they right. understand well, you why have the EG's Spoon. worth what it's worth. You have the June Seeker and you stuff have, like that. Yeah, you Eminem, know the notorious Honda. street racers that all just drove Civics. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, and as no, we that, don't that's, have that. That's their here. that's no. their first generation Camaro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or the other thing too is like, if you want to talk at pricing. I mean, we get so many requests for the AE eighty six. Oh God, it's it's crazy, and everybody wants the same one. Like the, the black and white. I was gonna say, let me guess, a white one. Everybody <laughs> wants the a same one. Torino. And the thing is, people think to themselves, "Okay, this has got to cost me two to five grand." No, no, man, you could put a zero behind that. Yeah, exactly. you're talking, you know, twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars <laughs> for sure mm-hmm. for a good, nice. 86 so yep. out, out, is just is what it is and outside. that's the thing is like i'll tell people if you don't believe me here's one for sale right now in japan like here's the listing yeah so if i'm making twenty thousand dollars on this sale like you guys think we are you know what i mean then explain to me why the cost is this over there right now you know right. or here's what they've sold for at auction i love showing people what oh cars yeah for auction. like if you go on because <laughs> if you go on do not exchange like yeah. that puts everything in perspective yeah. like you realize that like there's some cars that you guys have the I see and Gunai exchange like the same car, and I'm like, where are they making right. money? They're more like, expensive, and they're still in Japan. Yeah, like yeah. how does this <laughs> like, work? I like, think people, <laughs> honestly, I think people think like we shake a tree and like 15 <laughs> GTRs fall out of it. We put them in baskets and then take them to a farmer's market and sell them that, for a dollar each. That, that's that, not, you don't do that. <laughs> no, it's not how it works, you know. And that's that's the thing is that you, it's things are just expensive. Yeah, no, you they know? really are. Just like these parts are going to be expensive. Mm-hmm. They're gonna be. Because these parts are not for kids that bought cars that are going to go tool around in them. These parts are for serious dudes that are going to do serious restorations. Yep. You know, so these aren't the dormant sort of parts seriously expensive for exactly. cars. Yeah. So I, I guess my, my follow-up, 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 follow-up question is, all right, so say you have like 10 grand or something. What is a car that you would say is like, 
undervalued. Like seriously, Z32 undervalued. Z32 twin turbo. Like, be, yeah. Well, I mean, like, there's. I like, cannot believe those are that cheap. Yeah, they, yeah. they're silly cheap. Well, also, such a good car. Have you also noticed that like there's like a bunch of like there's been three. 3000 GT SL automatics that have sold on BAT oh. for like five <laughs> figures. I do not understand what? it. Yeah. Yeah. They've what? all sold for. Uh, I don't get it. What SL you, automatics? This no, is the thing. It. People need to recognize what is happening. And honestly, before <laughs> you call ridiculous. me, before you dial, just go do it as those small numbers. amount of research. Yeah. Know what you were going to ask about price so, because it's just, you wouldn't believe. Sometimes you'll give someone a price, and it's just like this, this silence, silence on the phone. Like, do you ever get the they're o waiting and then for like a second one, oh. or me to be like, just kidding? You know, they're actually nine. It's actually double this much. You know what I mean? But like, that's the thing is that you know it's it is expensive, and you know it's it, it, yeah, it's not what it used to be. So. What what are some cars okay, so that under, you would say so that are say like th- yeah you, something that's like you yeah. know affordable like sure. for like most people that would be a really good come up right now that's gonna you would think would probably appreciate or at the very least is worth like less than the car honestly should be worth yeah um you know I think right now I think the FCRX7 yeah yeah those is are a good cheap. car. Like They're a late cheap. one? There's a really cheap, yeah. They're cheap, and yeah. um, you can still get them twin turbo. Mm-hmm. Still get a manual. Um, I think you probably get one imported for less than an American one would be. That maybe, yeah. But you yeah. know, you're it's that's gonna be one of those cars that. So, um, you know, the FD is such an iconic car, and the price is gonna go up on those. They already are. They're gonna continue to climb. Yes. And people are gonna say, "What's next?" You know, and that's gonna be FC. The other one right now, the price is going through the roof on them already. And this is a car that I had ample opportunity to buy and never did. Is the Mark III Supra? Yes, mm. prices oh are going nuts. They are going crazy. That's absolutely, <laughs> absolutely insane. Especially the late model, like right. one JZ ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I yep. figured. Yeah, I figured the seven M cars can't be. Well, seven M I think was mostly in America only because yeah. they, they had like the one yeah. G or whatever right. yeah, in Japan. Yeah, yeah. But okay. you know, the one Js are just oh man. You know, the prices are crazy. The other one that's a good car. A, you know, if you're into Toyotas on the same line as a Soar. Yeah, mm-hmm. Soars are you know, always a good value. It's a good car, you know, um, and it, you know, still economical right now. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's fun stuff. I mean, there's stuff that you can get right now that is a fun car. You know, the 180s. Mm-hmm. 180s are cool. You know I mean, we got... 180 SXs? Yeah. You know, yeah. It's a cool car, and, you know, I don't know what the value on those is going to do. But what I do know is that most of the ones that are here in the U S have been put into a wall, like a whole bunch of times. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? That's true. So if there ever is a market for collectible one eighties, right. I or think you I think know, that, that that's having something one that, that will been trashed, you know, is, I think that uh, from what I can tell, just like outside of looking at a lot of drift, people are still getting out of that drift missile phase, which is, thank God is over. Um, uh, I don't know if it's over, but, but, no, I think that the 180s and stuff like that will go up like the EGs mm-hmm. did, where it's like it doesn't make sense like outside of that yep. niche market. But I think like 180s, EG Civics, stuff like that, those are just going to explode in value. Like mm-hmm. how like a Volkswagen van yeah. is worth like mysteriously mm-hmm. six figures. <laughs> I don't get it. Yep. But it's like it's just inordinately expensive compared to every other yeah. variant. The Aristo is another yeah. one right now. That's you another get, very good car. You can yes. get a twin turbo 2J. Aristo. So basically for anything, under 10 grand. Anything with a turbo 2J. Well, honestly, is, <laughs> here's my if it's turbo and it's manual, yeah, buy it. It's going to go up. Yep. And especially if it's a, it, it, you can get I the would, Aristo with a stick? Yeah, you could. Nice. Uh I would say I would also add inline 6. Yeah. To that cuz inline 6 turbo manual are those ones are, you know, if you look through that, that's a greatest hits. Like, just that one step is a greatest hits of all good Japanese cars. I mean, if you, you can, that, that alone will probably knock out probably 70% of all good Japanese cars historically. They've been turbo manual straight sixes. Mm-hmm. And if you take off turbo, that will count for probably 90% of mm-hmm. good Japanese cars. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the thing. I, like I said, I think there's this stigma that, like, because the car isn't in the U.S., it's cheap. And, and well, I think that's been perpetuated by a lot of uh, outlets that aren't really doing the full research, and they they well, put out articles or short video it's segments. It's a bait on and it. switch thing, you know. I think you have places like Japan Partner, you have places like, 
JDM Expo or whatever that will advertise what was once rib they'll, sue. They'll yeah. show they'll show a car and they'll say we've got an R32 GTR for $21,000. And they do mm -hmm. maybe but you don't want it. <laughs> but that's not the car they're going to try to sell you. You know right. what I mean? And <laughs> and that's fine, but what people do is they they see that Right. And then they never pursue it. So they don't realize that when they call that they're going to say, uh, yeah, but that one doesn't have an engine in it. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. if you want one with an engine, you know, it's going to be 30,000, you know, so people just take that, that post of a car for right. 21,000 and then they email it to me and they tell me I'm a psychopath and that I don't know what cars are worth because one time you found one thing in one place for one reason with one thing, you know, and yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not saying there's not deals out there, but I'm saying, you, you know, know like, all I'm saying is yeah. I bought a AW11 for $500 once right. and I sold it for $3,000. I, every star and planet in the universe aligned for that deal to happen mm -hmm. because that car should not have been that much money. Sure. And I will never in my life find another oh, one. But we all know this, and, right? And that. that's just one of those things where it's just like people think like, Oh well, this guy found himself a Ferrari for ten grand. I get I this kind of question that. a lot it's with just people like, on my channel. Like, where can I find one of Blah for what? You're you... a master of doing that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but like, well, you can't. Yeah, yeah where can no, I find an can't. E30 for what you paid for that one? You can't. Yeah, yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. Like, E30 like, M3 for sixteen but, three. But here's the thing: is like, doesn't exist. No, it doesn't even, exist. Even when you bought it, so, it didn't exist. I know. The thing is, it was still undervalued quite a bit when I bought it. Now, if I just walk around to every guy. Selling an E30 and saying an E30 M3, but oh yeah, well, my buddy got his for 16. Like, <laughs> how many black eyes can you sustain? Great. <laughs> uh, would you like me to slow clap for you? Uh, what do you want? You know what I mean? Like, cool. You know what I mean? Like, oh, sorry, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like I said, deals exist. People sell things at certain times at certain prices because they have to, or right. you know. But that doesn't make that the industry norm. Right. I just I I want you to know back when I was working at Maury's as a car salesman, I would tell all the sales who are I was working with, I'm like I know this dude he sells like imported Japanese cars, and they go, "How does he do that?" And I'm like, "This is the most patient person I've ever met in my life." Like, <laughs> like, you're a rock star in like every other car salesman. Oh man, because yeah. like I would I would just get so livid because well, it's like the the amount of customer service that you have to provide to do your basic job is like. It's pure ten out. Of 10. Well, I think we talked about All this all day like, long. For I sell car someone a car. Someone. I'm usually connected to them for as long as they own that. Yeah, car. Yeah, you're right. Talking to make their I've, mom and stuff. I have like, like yeah. customers <laughs> that call me that I sold cars to three years ago, asking me for stuff. You know, I'm pretty sure that the guy that sold, you know, leased someone a Kia or whatever, doesn't get phone calls from the guy. Years oh, and it, years it, and years. It, it, it exists. Oh, I'm sure it, it exists, exists. But, like, but it's it's not on the right. level that you get. Right. You know. Yeah. So, but you I know, save contact info, but yeah, I never it, use it. It comes with the territory, and some people don't like to do their own research, and that's fine. But you know, it's um, oh, yeah. But I, I'm a little different than this, though. I mean, people are looking for a nice car a lot of the time in that case, and I'm buying like. The right you, car you in buy, the wrong condition. Yeah, usually, that, that's that, that's the best yeah. description of you. Is you you will buy a Ferrari for. How I'll much? buy the car that notoriously needs that really stupid engine out service because it needs the stupid engine out service because it doesn't have a service. Because you know how to and do see, it. Exactly. I don't care. And that's the thing is you have that So we do that and we just get railed for it on the internet. Like, true story. We bought a Supra. Mm -hmm. It was like the first one we could find, right? That was eligible for import. Okay. And it was rough, right? But it's the first Supra you can get. Right. We do like a full, like refurbishment of this car i mean put you know te37s on it tires on it suspension on it full paint mm -hmm. you know real t37s mind right as well. full <laughs> we interior, have to actually yeah. note that <laughs> full interior refresh upgrade the headlights you know upgrade the taillights to the 98s i mean this car was beautiful we listed for sale for i think forty five thousand dollars. it had like forty thousand miles on it v160 V160, yeah. Nice. Um, and out come these pictures from another company, import company, that's like, this is what the car sold for at auction, and this is what it used to look like. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly cool. right. 
cool. Like <laughs> you guys should have bought it and fixed it up then. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's the thing is that, you know, and this is what it, it sold for. People yeah. look at it and say, Oh, well you're selling for 40, but you only paid 25 for it or 26 for it. Great. Sure. Yeah. But we put 12 grand into the car. Yeah, you know, we, that's we the thing. I mean, back to there's five thousand dollars of wheels on it. You know, there's three thousand dollars in suspension on it. You know, there's six thousand dollars of paint on it. You know, things cost money mm -hmm. to make it that way. That's like you, if you, you were to, be, if you, you were to sell that Ferrari to me, mm -hmm. and I were to turn around and say, "Oh, but you only paid," and you're like, "Oh, but I had to do a full engine out." Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, like your time isn't worth anything. You know, well, like, according what, to the IRS, it's not. Right. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> what you what you put into the car isn't worth anything. Right. And we see that a lot too. You know, like people like to say, oh, well. That, that's, you know, but, it, that's not just you. It's, yeah. we get these things or we get these vans at work. Again, going back to vans because these are just <laughs> the most ridiculous people. Um, where all of people complain be like, yeah, why, why does this wiper motor cost me $1,000 or $2,000? No, sorry, it's 1500 That's what it was. Sorry, I had to cut down the middle. But, um, <laughs> and I'm like, well, you see, yeah, we did the wiper motor. The wiper motor was an hour and a half worth of labor. However, rewiring your fuse box to make the wiper motor work, that took rewiring the entire effing car, and that was 10 hours of labor. By the way, this should have cost you about yeah. five grand, but mm -hmm. I'm a really good guy, and I'm helping you <laughs> yeah, out here. But but that's not what people <laughs> care about. Yeah, yeah no. they, they don't hear that. All they hear is... Bottom line. <laughs> they just hear the bottom line. Um, I know uh, we're probably cutting a little short on time for you. But, yeah, we're getting um, close. But yeah, well, anyway, th thank you very much for coming on. Uh, we're going to continue doing some other stuff. we got some other yeah, basic we got a stories, stories we, got, we want to talk about. Uh, before you head out, though, I have one question. Uh, all right, I'm about to put, get the Crusted up finished up here in a little bit, probably within a month, you know, just getting the transmission back and get back to running and driving condition. Do I put my super high strong 160 horsepower D-Series into my Civic? Or do I start Jana's much longer lasting carbureted B series project in her record? Hmm. Listen, I know Jana, <laughs> and I think the answer she's going to want me to is give the right accord. Now <laughs> is the accord. <laughs> my Civic's never going to get done. It's going to be no. sitting it for 10 years. So. <laughs> but it's on the upside, man. Civic pricing is going up. So maybe if you just don't touch it for a while. <laughs> no, I honestly. I'm not even joking. In its current condition, yeah. my Civic is worth more than I paid it for. Yeah. And it is an, it's now got rust on it, and it is now not running. Mm -hmm. And it now has about <laughs> five-year-old stale gas in it. It's cool. And, and when it you is totally still worth more. When you totally restore it and go to sell it, I'm going to post pictures of its current condition. <laughs> and, and, and the original <laughs> price. But, 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 <laughs> but yeah, this was but you only... bought it for this. <laughs> You, you bought it for $900 uh, 15 years ago, and right. yeah, this isn't worth it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, yeah, I hate people. Yeah. <laughs> it so it's unanimous, it's unanimous Janice car first. Yeah, so. I think Janice car has to win. Yeah, so. it, it makes the same amount of power, but it's with a dual red cam carbureted engine, so it'll yeah, be a good. lot cooler. So, yeah, that's the way that The South African happened. twin carby setup? Yes. Oh, God. I'm <laughs> so excited for that to be a thing. <laughs> <laughs> the most hilarious Accord ever. I'm but, fine with that. So when I originally like built the engine for the Civic, it was for the express purpose of going out street racing and upsetting people with shitbox GSRs. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have like another level of doing that with Jana's carbureted non VTEC B series Accord. <laughs> so, wait, wait, Brian, I'll let you jack. It's also being the snow out, and it, your, your drive isn't going to last. Yeah, like, I'm looking longer, forward so. to this now. I didn't even notice that. Quattro yep. style. Yeah, you got, you got your Audi, so hopefully your water pump stays in one piece. So. <laughs> and your timing gates survive. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, also, you, you need to replace that. Yeah, it's coming. Now. <laughs> it's coming. I think... Uh, that I, guy that came for those uh, winter tires is like, I opened the gate for him. He's like, which unit's yours? I'm like, it's the one with the, feet, uh, the shitty Audi in front of it. He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Hey, know. maybe sell to that guy. Yeah, sell your Audi. Go buy yourself like a Civic or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah get yeah. it before they blow up in price. Or start daily driving a GTR. Why not? Ah, I know, right? I get to ask those. Um, how do these handle in the snow? I'm like, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't probably know. well. I don't, think, <laughs> I don't know. With winter tires, probably fabulously. There you go. Mm. That would be my very hedged bet Perfect. answer. All right. All right. Well, I'm well, not going to keep you any longer. Right. We're, we're going to pontificate about what your next car should be. You'll find out when you listen to this. All right. Instead. Excellent. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. See you later. So, anyway, I think that uh, Brian, for his next car, 
Um, since he's got all the cars in Japan available to him, I think he should get a Honda City for his next car. I think he should get a Suzuki Cappuccino. Ooh, a, cappu- a, cappuccino. a cappuccino. What? Oh yeah, he does not fit. No, he barely fits into a GTR. You could cut so the roof all, off. Actually, of it. yeah. So a City won't work because with the with the uh, GTR because last time. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, we had to pause for a selfie. <laughs> um, last time uh, I drove one of his GTRs, I had to go to the shop because he can't. He's like too tall to like lift his leg off the clutch. So I think um, a GTR wouldn't work. Maybe I would say a Jimny, but a Jimny's also too small. I think maybe a Land Cruiser, like a super uh, like. Well, we, we just talked about it earlier. Why not an Aristo with a six speed? Yeah, he would fit into that. Ryan, buy yourself in a six speed Aristo. <laughs> He said, all right, that will be Brian's new car. Problem solved. You replace your S5 with a six-speed Aristo. It will be better in every way. (laughs) It really, really will be. Actually, literally. Twin Turbo TJ, manual, won't won't break, probably (laughs) rust-free. Yeah, exactly. And, like, that's a GS, right? So, like, they don't don't really rust out. No, they're they're, they're bulletproof cars. And it's a, yeah, again, 2J, so it'll have, like, 600,000 miles on the clock and still make 1,000 horsepower. So, um... Anyway, let's move Back on. Back to regular the scheduled news We're gonna news do some stories. more of our regular scheduled stories. We have a lot to talk about still. I mean, we're we've got like three stories. It's well, fine. still, but I mean, this week's been just been long. So, <laughs> um, we had a lot to talk about. But I wanted to make sure we got Brian on because that uh, Skyline story was kind of an important one. Um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, I'm glad I'm gonna start at the top. Then. Accord. So yeah, let's start with yours at the top. So, we've been hearing grumblings for the last, uh, as long as I've been alive, yeah. that Jeep will be bringing back the Comanche, which is the pickup version of the XJ. Which was cool. I it love was. the Comanche. Yeah. Uh, they kind of did. Uh, now they're actually bringing us a Wrangler-based Gladiator, which, okay. Cool. Yeah. I still want to, I want an XJ Comanche, just make that exact truck. Yeah, but like that was a Cherokee based thing back in the day, right? The uh, the Comanche. Yeah, now the Cherokee's been neutered, so yeah. you can't really do so that. So would you really prefer a current Cherokee based pickup over this? Actually? Cause at that point it would be a Ute. It would be so ugly. I would still probably say that oh, because no. it's a I Ute. actually like the All Wrangler. Right, remember last episode we were talking about the Ridgeline? Yes. Yeah, so we we're talking about how the Ridgeline doesn't really have a competitor. That would be a great Ridgeline competitor. Is a Ute so based this? off a of Cherokee? No, this is not. This is a great competitor to a Forerunner pickup. Which, incidentally, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, even though I mean it exists as the Tacoma, but if you had well, a... yeah, but if you call it a Forerunner pickup, <laughs> yeah, that sounds even cooler. It does. <laughs> <laughs> like an FJ pickup. God, that would be weird. That'd be. <laughs> this weird article and has awesome. like a thousand pictures of the Gladiator, and they're all underneath it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's for people that go off roading while getting <clears throat> lifted or something. No, I, I, I in all honesty though, the Gladiator it, it's pretty cool. Um, I'm really happy that Jeep is still making cool stuff. Um, yeah, and this will probably sell really well because as we learned a few episodes ago, the Wranglers in the top ten selling like vehicles. Cakes, yeah. Who knows how? Well, Although the chicken tax is coming back, which means it's coming back from American cars too. <sighs> I know because <laughs> Donald I Trump's know. a fucking idiot. He is a. F- um, but no, so. I, actually, I think the the Jeep Gladiator. I like the concept of it because specifically because it is a unique vehicle. I think the world needs more unique vehicles, yep. especially right now. This thing because, has its own niche. Yeah, it's it is in yeah. I mean, why everybody that wants a Jeep also either owns or wants a pickup. Like there's a hundred percent overlap yeah. between those two markets. Yeah. So yeah, it makes perfect sense. Um, and really the only other vehicle, I, I think the most modern vehicle compared to this I could think of is like, if you got like a super late model Toyota FJ40, uh, pickup. Okay. Which were made into the eighties. <laughs> yeah. But that's still not very modern. I know, but that's what I'm talking nah, about. I was man. like, there's not anything what that you can really need com- compete with a Cadillac this. Escalade EXT. That's so stupid. I'm so happy that vehicle's <laughs> out of existence. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, me too. But yeah, that's there's that same engine offerings as the Wrangler. I'm sure it's really good off road, and you can have. The you know, I heard, the I heard a Wrangler with an exhaust on it yesterday. Oh. Yeah, because I was I was apparently they they uh, took Lake Street down from three lanes to one lane in front of Lake Calhoun, so I was stuck on Lake Street Friday night for like an hour after I went to the Habitushery. <laughs> um, and so the. 
I was stuck next to one, and it's like it, you remember a few episodes ago. I I had the revelation that the V6 uh, bi turbo Maserati is actually just a Pentastar V6. Yeah, of course. Yeah, now that I've heard a Jeep Wrangler with an exhaust on it, it yeah. makes sense. Like, it totally sounds like a Maserati. Right. It does not sound like something you would hear in a truck. It sounds really weird. Yeah, that don't sound good, though. No, they, they all, like, every single, it's like every corporate V6 wants to be a VQ now. I know. Which actually makes sense, because a VQ sold, like, hotcakes. Everybody wanted Hopefully it. Hopefully they're more reliable than the VQ. But. Well, that's the thing, is that like everybody wanted it, and now they're having horrific timing chain <laughs> failures left and right. <laughs> they're all just copying the VQ design, and they can't figure out why they're just... No, they're, they're perfectly fine, because they're like, by the time it breaks, it's like reasonably, it's a reasonable amount of time. It's like, you know, 150,000 miles right. or so. Right, yeah, you could... It's, yeah. A, it's a totally feasible amount of time. That's on its, like, second or third owner at that point, so the person that originally bought that car has now bought another with one. It. The second person bought another one, and the third person no, the is person now bought the first one's other one yeah and then the first person bought an other other one yeah it, it's it's making it, it's actually got a chain going on so yep. it, the vq engine is actually the perfect corporate v6 and for all of the worst reasons um <sighs> v6s are just uh they don't yeah they don't really do it for me like it, it's weird because like a lot of cars i really like have v6s in them but mm-hmm. like i discovered it was an inline six version of it and i'm like that's really cool the c31 is oh, the first right. thing that comes to mind yeah is that the 200ZR, which had the Skyline uh, RB20 in it. Really? Yeah, 200ZR. A Z31? ZR. Yeah. If you With want... an RB20? Yeah. Really cool. That is really cool. Actually, when I, like, way before you even met Brian, like, that, that's the car I want to import, is a Z31, or a Z31 200ZR with a digital dashboard. Uh, It'd be so cool. Oh, that hurts me inside. Dude, it'd be the perfect car it's for It's the perfect me. car for you, yeah. It is, it's all the 80s stuff I want, and none of the bullshit v6 garbage yeah rb20s are pretty good yeah it's and then i was just like a second generation celica supra is like <laughs> everything that i want plus it's a two plus two that doesn't look awful i, I was actually just hurting me with 80s right now i actually i made a spreadsheet between those two cars because <laughs> i was like all right what do i need a car can fit four people in it so it'd be a two plus two z31 or a celica supra I'm like, which one looks better? Uh, Selka Supra, hands down. Which one has an inline six? Selka Supra. Which one's more common to manual? Selka Supra. Which one has a more reliable digital dashboard? Selka Supra. Which one's digital dashboard looks better? C31. Like, the Selka Supra won, like, eight out of ten categories between the two. But I assume they never sold a Selka Supra with an RB because it's too old for that. No, but out of 5M. Yeah, I know that. Oh, you mean a Jay-Z? Well, I mean, anything modern. No, not an M series. No, I mean, but th- that's the thing is like with the Celica Supra, the 5M is way more reliable than the 7M. Yeah, oh yeah. So that's why the Celica Supra, another thing that's Celica Supra Didn't yours have a 5M in it? You know, mine has six that I had. Oh. That is from a Soar. Oh. Uh, engine never failed. Everything else around it did because I did very little research <laughs> as to like everything else I can possibly fail. I'm like, does it run? Does it drive? I can fix everything else. I'm like, <laughs> Oh, fuck, what's an electrical problem? My oh, shit. <laughs> and yeah, then I, I do and remember I the host. test drive, and it did run and drive just fine. It ran, drive great, and everything seemed to work, but it seemed to and actually did were two different things. Yeah, well, whoops. <clears throat> anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, do Patreon real quick. Okay, doke. So, I want to touch on this. I picked one kind of right out of the middle just because it's not an entire episode worth of content, but I'm sure we'll still have some things to say on this, and it basically pertains to young or new drivers. So anyone coming up 15 to 16 with their permit, driver's education, the written testing, the actual driver's test, getting your license, what that means. Um, basically, what are your thoughts on, well, just How we for, do it. for this case, I want to just focus on Minnesota just because it's easier. So what do you think about the ages currently? It's like 15 for a permit, I think 16 ages, for a license. Ages are just fine. Okay. I, I think that age is not really the issue. Okay. Um, because really, if you've ever met a 16-year-old versus an 18-year-old, yeah. they're the same person. Uh, yeah, I'd say 16-year-olds honestly might be more mature in a lot of ways than 18-year-olds, well, just because of cause all the things eight- going on in life. And well, not only that, with the 18-year-old, you're getting like a bunch of, like, you're finally an adult, but like mentally you're not. Right. So it's like, 16-year-old, you're fine. Yeah. Um, I think the big thing we need to do, push manual transmissions. Have like an insurance discount for a manual transmission. I agree. Because... All right, so this is the example. My boss, his daughter drives a manual. Mm-hmm. She's, you know, with the exception of like one minor fender bender when she stole her mom's Tiguan, 
like not having issues. Um, <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, as opposed to uh, this other 16 year old that I know that is just, you know, in the neighborhood of where I live, uh, I've seen this guy. He has an automatic car. He just, he always is texting and driving. I've been cut off by him. I've yelled at him like an old man <laughs> in traffic. You, Ryan? Yeah, I know, right? Never. But it's just one of those things where a, a, a manual transmission, I think, makes a big deal with that because does. you actually have to pay attention and right. you're a new driver. Yeah. So paying you attention cut on distracted driving, I don't care how you push it. Paying attention you, to driving, like you have every, to. People are like, well, you're worried about what gear you're in. No, you're not going to worry about what gear you're in because if you're not in a gear, you're, you're not, not moving think anywhere. About it. Right. Yeah, like you're gonna get rear-ended if anything, and it's not gonna be your problem. <laughs> right. It's the other guy's problem that was driving automatic and was texting and driving. Exactly, but and you uh, get the payout and a new better car with exactly. The manual. So that's the thing. Manual transmissions should have an insurance discount for teenagers. I yep. really think. Um, also, this the whole education system. Well, has to don't change. touch on that yet. <laughs> I, this is this is like a five bullet point thing. Okay. So okay. This specifically age. All right, age. Yeah, fine. I think so too. I think the yeah. actually I like the permit thing because that forces you to drive with a an actual driver. Yes, I think the permit's huge. That's a big deal. And I think you should be required to do it because the people that just wait until eighteen and get their license don't do the permit driving. You know, you know, what I think there should be what with permit driving. Um, I don't know. I don't understand why this isn't already a thing. You should have a certificate from one. Advanced driving HBDE or autocross event. Yeah. So you know how your car handles. I think that should be a requirement to be insured in this country. Yeah, absolutely. I think that every single person should have to do like one autocross every five car years. Car control clinic. Yeah. That's the thing is that's how autocross is. Kind of. But like specifically you do want car control clinic. Yeah. Just because like most of the people out there have no idea where the traction limits of their cars are. They don't know how to control understeer or oversteer. Yes. You can't control understeer, but you can control oversteer. You can't control understeer. But you kind of It's, it's a lot harder to control. Yeah. But you could at least tell them how to get out of it. So I, I still firmly believe that that should be a requirement for either insurance or getting your license or renewing or something. Yes. Um. Bullet point two, classroom instruction. Classroom instruction is, I, I want to say it's too focused on what every single sign means. Yeah, that's but, all it is. It's telling you but, where you can and that, can't turn, what the signs like, mean. You, you need that. You need that. I think what they should do mm -hmm. in addition to that yeah. is teach you the absolute bare minimum of car maintenance. Why, when your tires wear, what happens? Mm-hmm. Oh, why, yeah. I think so why, too. Why old tires are bad compared to cra to new tires? Yep. Why? Or how to like replace a tire? How to jump a battery? You know, yep. stuff. Just little stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, how your brake lights work? Things like that. Like sure. that, that's a little bit more. Uh, that's Looks a little like bit routine checks to make sure your car is safe. Yeah, like how to like, check your brake lights without having another person there. Like you just back up against the wall. Hey, are they both on? Yeah. Or okay. put your cell phone behind you, turn on the video mode, and just go stomp that pedal a couple times. Exactly. Like there's, I feel like there should be an aspect of car maintenance to it. I think so too. Maybe not how to maintain it yourself, but at least how to make educated decisions on when your car is and is not safe. Well, or that, that's I'm, that's I mean for when I say car maintenance. That's I say classroom car maintenance. Okay. Not. Not like actual in-person hands-on wrench car maintenance. Okay. Because I think that'd be old much, but I think understanding how yeah. these things... Because there's like, yeah, I understand it's a little hard to say like, you know, how does fuel injection work? How does this work? How does that work? Yeah, it's just not but, necessary. For well, not only that, there's just there's so many different versions on every car. But like, what are things that are standard on every car? Mm -hmm. Every car has brakes. Every car has tires. Every car has lights. Every mm -hmm. car has a battery. You know, how do these things work? All right. And I think that would be kind of an important thing to, well, not kind of, that actually definitely would be an important thing. How do your brakes work? Why, why you know, having bad tires affects your braking. How um, your, the age of your tires impacts the traction mm -hmm. of your tires. Things like that. And even adverse road conditions. Yeah. Do, what, what would you add? Honestly, for me, I mean, I, I like your idea there. Um, basically, just I'm trying to think of, like, what people ignore about their cars. I'm, like, yeah. teaching them, in addition to everything you said, like, what do all the gauges, what do all the warning lights mean? That's car? huge. Big. The gauges like, and warning What's a temperature lights. gauge? Like, what, what is what the difference in the red oil light and the yellow oil light? Exactly. Things like that, I think, is huge. Yeah. Um, other than that, I mean, our classroom, it doesn't last long enough. I mean, I, I really think it should be a more progressive thing than it is. 
just no. to, and it should be more expensive, honestly. I, I absolutely agree. It, um, it should actually cost something. Um, I think that you should have maybe <sighs> two years, I'd say. Yeah. You, you start, you get like one year basic in like high school. Well, I think like a then, number of hours is okay. Yeah. Because if, if you're really motivated, like I don't want to penalize people from driving early. No, you're right. I think, yeah, number of hours. And um, then that gets bumped maybe if you do these I, I th- I, Yes. Th- that'd be a really good idea is, yeah, a number of hours and also so like keep the core and, as it is with adding all the car stuff. And then there's a second section where if you don't do a car control clinic, you have to sit through another 30 hours. I absolutely agree. I think, I think it should be a, a, a three to one ratio. Okay. For well, every that kind of gets to behind the wheel then. Yeah. Cause we could work that into the behind the wheel section. Yes. Well, I think that that's another thing we, we need to talk about is our system separates behind the wheel and classroom. Right. Which is kind of an issue. It is. Because you don't, when you're taking a science class in college, your lab cor- your lab course isn't the semester after you take the written right. portion of your science. <laughs> you do them at the same time. Right, yeah. You should do these two things at the same time. I agree. And that's logistically really tough and it's really expensive. And but you know what else is really tough and expensive? Getting a license in another country? No, removing a steering wheel column out of somebody's sternum. That's tough and you expensive. You have to try so hard to die in a modern car. But I mean, like, still, like, having I, to deal. I get it, but that's a little. The, the amount of like just like avoidable car accidents and bullshit that we go through in this country, um, those, I think, would I, I honestly think it'd be a wash between spending more money up front versus. Yeah. But I mean, in America, we don't believe in spending money up front. We wait till there's a crisis, until the world's <sighs> burning, and then we scramble to do the bare minimum. Exactly. So, and <laughs> this is going to take a long time for it to completely catch on fire. So, yeah, I, yeah think, I think working that car control aspect into behind the wheel is important, but obviously currently behind the wheel, you do it in a school car and you really can't do car control with a school car. You're going to want to do with something you're actually going to be driving. So I think, you know, there's another thing that me and Jan have always said is it's better to learn how to drive on a, the worst possible car. That's true. And, and that, that probably lends better to the instructor's car than I, I think. I think the instructor's car, by law, should be ten years old or older. <laughs> and like, <clears throat> I, I, I'm actually serious about this one. The tires on it should be federally mandated to be at most seven thirty seconds. Oh, that's a ton of tread. Yeah, but I mean, still re- reasonably. Okay. But they should be semi-worn tires in a car okay. that's about ten years old. Yep. Because it, it, that way, the car is going to probably need something. There's probably something broken on it. <laughs> the car is not going to handle perfectly. The CV shafts it, were so bad on the Impala. I did my behind the wheel in. And th- that's the thing. That's fine. I was telling the guy the whole time, like, dude, your axles are about to fall out of this car. It, well, that's the thing. You know what that kid's about to get into hmm. for their first car? A car that's about 10 years old with 730 seconds on their tires. No, no. Modern parents, man, they give them a brand new car with no. the most air brakes oh. they can. Yeah, well, they try to. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, even that usually is a car with 700 airbags, like a 10-year-old <laughs> Kia, yeah. with 730 seconds on the tire. <laughs> like, that's what it is. It's not going to be an actually good car. I guess. It's a, that's uh, yeah, why I, I think it, you sh- it should be federally mandated that the driver's head car has to be a, a, a pile of shit, <laughs> like, just to make you a better driver. Because... <laughs> You know, it's one of those cars where it, it's not going to actually kill you, but if you don't right. know what you're doing, you're going to feel like you're going to die in the car. Yeah. That would make you such a better driver. Sh- okay, here's one that's not even on this <coughs> list. Should you be required to have a winter based behind the wheel? Yes. Yeah. Like, that, even for people, like, doing their behind it, the wheel in the summer, like, I still think there should be, you that, know, that you know lends to the year plus of driver's education. Yeah, that's, that's what I said. Like, you should be able to, you should have to do, like, two years worth of driver's ed. Mm-hmm. Like of like in school and stuff. Like maybe you should teach it in schools, right? Um, or skid pad maybe if you're in a southern area. Yeah, I, skid pad maybe, but like that's a big maybe. But like in Minnesota alone, like we absolutely need winter driving driver's ed, and it's like that. That's a big deal. Um, I really think that we should also do what they do in Finland, where you have to get yourself out of a skid. Mm-hmm. You're driving the line, and the driver's ed teacher just pulls the e-brake. Yep. What do you do? Like, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Well, I think they're, they're, again, the classroom section's inadequate, but not that far not off what it could it's do. Just, the driver behind the wheel is section. woefully inadequate. We don't teach anyone how to react to the car. We don't teach anyone how to identify what's going on. We, we teach them how to use a lane. And we teach them it. how to turn it on and, like, let other people know what we're going to do on a highway in it. 
our driver's ed program, when you compare our driver's ed program to India and Finland, we are way oh, closer dude. to India's driving six feet in a straight line. Jamie Clarkson, fail. Yeah, as opposed <laughs> to like Finland's like actual like. Yeah, what happens when you get stuck in a snowbank in the middle of nowhere? He's about to get his license after three years of hard work. <coughs> yeah, I mean, we may as well at this point, since like apparently driving is not appealing at all to, and I'm going to hate to use this word, millennials. No, it's it's not that. It's I know. We, we discussed this a couple it. weeks ago. Yeah, they they're they're absolutely it. into cars. So. Yeah, they just can't but, afford I mean, them. But I mean, with our yeah. generation, we're seeing a lot more people waiting past the 15, 16 driving thing because it's more expensive to do that than it is to just wait till you're 18 yeah. and just go take the test once. I also That needs to go away. I agree. I that, agree. That, you absolutely need all the education you can. I, th- I firmly believe that the people that start driving when they're 15 are way better drivers than people start oh, when they're yeah. 18. And yeah. The next bullet point here is interesting one. I didn't think about this. But what if you're an, uh, a later in life immigrant to the country and you start driving then? So it's really easy to get a driver's license if you've got one from another country or something like that. But what, I mean, we've got so much stuff here that's just, you know, well, we may you have know, never dealt with, especially if, like if you're from If you're from another country and you have a driver's license, yep. that should be probably pretty easy to pass driver's ed. I think you should have to go through the I same thing as everybody so else. I think so, too, because A, theirs was probably more stringent to begin with, unless they came from India. Listen, if you're taking an AP class yep. and you're going to college, yeah, you still have to take the SAT, right? I the AP class so. makes I took you, the ACT, so. But it's still, whatever. <laughs> right, yeah. You have to take the standardized test. Yeah. The AP class makes you better equipped for the Correct. standardized test. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make you not do the standardized test. Right. That's how I, I think we should have. Do you think a standardized test is sufficient, though? Or do you no, think they no, should be required to I'm, go through the year of driver's ed? That, that's I'm saying. You should have to absolutely go through driver's ed. I'm saying that the... Yeah, the driver's license, yeah, it makes you probably pretty good. But doing but for that, somebody like that, where they're, they're accustomed to it, I think the, should you give them like a temp license that's, I, that, I, that works during that time? You should have, not? well, that's what an international driver's license is. Right, is. I understand. I think um, actually the driver's test itself yeah. should be way harder. Oh, for sure. And not, not, not as much as like, oh my God, you, you, you got into the turn lane too early. You're failing. No, like have it fail because like you are crazy nervous and you're gonna kill somebody. You just ran over this curb. Yeah, like no, I, like have it. Yeah, you know, it's. I failed a driver's ed test because I put my blinker on too late once. But the girl that passed before me passed even though she drove over a curb. Hmm. So it's great. Like, that's a broken system. That's a broken system. Um. <laughs> I think that the driver's ed test should, um, you should be required. You, sh- you have to, have, you should have to have slips from a, uh, like an in-class school mm-hmm. from an HPDE or an autocross or something like that, a car handling event. I still think, yeah, a car control clinic. A the car control that are clinic designed event. for younger drivers. And you have to have a slip from a driver's ed teacher. For uh, the driven portion. For the behind the wheel, yeah. To be able to even take the driver's license test. I think in, if you do those three, yeah, there should be, a, like, a test out that you can take. Yeah. Like, again, in college, you can test out of classes. Mm-hmm. If you test out of it, that's perfectly fine. Yep. But if you're not, t- if you don't test out, then you have to go through it. Yeah, I mean, if you're somebody that's been, you know, carting since they were eight, you're yeah. probably way better equipped to deal with all the driving challenges than, with driving. Yeah, so. than somebody that's had, has never even opened the hood of a car. Right, and got their license at 25 with a test. Yeah, that 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 whole test thing needs to go. Um, I think also think uh, winter tires. I think they should be federally man- mandated. Mandated, mandated. Absolutely, every state south of the Mason-Dixon line, and I actually would use that as the cutoff. Honestly, I'd say anywhere where there are historical average temperatures of the low of 45. That That's a good idea. Hit. Yeah, I like that. If it if it snows, if you get more than like or yeah, inches of snowfall. If per you, year. if you get more than half an inch of snowfall per year, you should have federally mandated snow tires. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, it, again, Montreal's been doing this for ages, and they're like subsidized, so they're not expensive. Yeah, I think that's another thing. I, I think uh, subsidizing might be a good idea. Again, very hard to pass with any Republican right. anywhere near a government. Oh, God. Um, but at the same time, you know, anybody that says that we shouldn't subsidize snow tires, 
Uh, I will ask them how much they love getting rear-ended by the, <clears throat> to use their terms, the immigrant with the shitty minivan. Great. Yeah, it's not the immigrant. It's not the shitty minivan. It's the fact that this is a person that's never been in snow before. Right. This isn't their fault. Like, this is... a. They weren't prepared. It's an equipment issue. Nobody told them that this was going to be a thing. Again, falling back to our driver's ed system. All right. You know, if you're getting rear-ended because somebody from Somalia has never seen snow, this is their very first winter in the in America. Yep. This is their very first winter outside of the equatorial belt. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Where the temperature is always the same. Yeah, exactly. Like, if this is somebody that's from, you know, not just Somalia, but like Thailand, you know, India, China, China, Mexico, yep, um, Morocco, Spain, Italy, <laughs> like places like this. <laughs> like, it's not just a third world thing. It's just like this right. is an equatorial. It's, it's thing. It's a geographic thing. It's a geographic sure. thing. If this is somebody that's this is their very first winter, and they're about to slam on their brakes, two car lengths, you know, behind you, and you're like, stopped, and they're doing forty. Yeah, it's gonna end. Exactly as you imagine, not how they did. Right. It's not their fault because they don't know what the hell to do. Like they've never heard about that. And again, not their fault. That's our government's fault because our government just... mandates people <laughs> driving on the road. And these are the same people that are saying you can't have your car so low, but you know what? You can drive, you know, because you got your driver's license. And you can and also long. drive legally with summer tires at four thirty seconds in the winter. Exactly. Summer tires at 4.30 seconds in winter, legal. Having a car that's lowered six inches from original body height, not, not legal. legal. That doesn't make sense the to System's me. broken. Yeah, that's a broken system. Absolutely. Moving on from broken systems, I want to talk about a non-broken system. More yeah. EVs. Okay. <laughs> so, I like uh, EVs. <laughs> me too. So remember that Hyundai Kona that uh, Randy had? <coughs> yes, I do. Like two times ago when he was here? So apparently in Europe, they've taken that thing. And they yes. put a 64 kilowatt hour battery in it and a very powerful electric motor, and they're going to sell it for like 34 grand with a 300 mile range. That's cool. And they're going to give us the Kia Soul version of that. I'm okay with that. Me too, because the Kia Soul is actually kind of cool. And you can lower it. And you can lower it. And it'll almost 300 miles on a charge. And it's like that, a- after incentive, 28 grand. So 300 miles on a charge is the same as like a the normal best car. Tesla. No, it's a normal car. Right, and that's the big thing. It's 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 to the point now where you don't think about it. Yeah, that's a normal car. Right. Like, my van does 297 miles the per FJ tank. does 225 a tank. Yeah. So bad. Yeah, I, I, I do 297 per tank on right. average. And then when is that ever really an issue? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you just get gas every couple so of days. I'm, you I guess plug I'm, into your car every other day. Well, you just plug it in at night. Even if you have just the, the worst home charger ever, you could... Depending on how much you drive, you could keep up with it with just the standard wall outlet. I plug this in every other day, and it's fine. You know what this is? Not a, a cigarette. It's a douche flute. It's not a cigarette. I don't, that's, that's the thing. It's like That's perfectly fine. Also, that looks really cool. I like the, the face on I it. I love that front end. It's like a Stormtrooper squinty, a lemon. No, dude. It reminds me of uh, one of the Moais from um, Easter Island. Oh, whoops, I just remembered I didn't have this on the screen. There we go. There you go, stream. Sorry about that, streamers. <laughs> no, it looks like an Easter Island head. I don't know what an Easter Island head is. Y- you know Easter Island? They have those statues that are half bar- or like buried up to their neck in the sand. They're like massive. Mm-mm. Just Google Easter Island for people. It reminds me of an Easter Island head. I really, really love how much it's snowing outside right now. Yes, me too. It's going to be a blast with my five thirty seconds. Oh, I'm interesting. Tires. Yeah, yeah, it reminds me of those guys. Okay, I can see that. <laughs> like, it looks really cool. Should we just sell like a vinyl <laughs> stick-on nose? Yes, on this thing, I would be about it. <laughs> but anyway, no, it's actually really cool. I, I've never disliked the Kia Soul. No, I like the Soul. Like it's just like every single time I've ever mentioned the Kia Soul, I say it, it's fine, but this is cooler, and I just list off like a Cyan XB or something. Right, and but that's I mean, pretty much true. But I mean, this thing is super high spec. So I mean, for that. What it's going to eventually amount to being, it's 28 to 30 grand after the tax credit, but you get like heated seats, heated steering wheel, premium sound, radar cruise, like leather seats. I mean, it's it's pretty much every feature you could possibly want in a modern vehicle. And it's got really cool taillights. Oh, I didn't even look at the back. 
Yeah, yep. they, they wrap around the top. That's really pretty, cool. Pretty funky. Also, oh, um, <laughs> really cool taillights. I saw a Honda Civic Coupe at night. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. With the uh, like, uh, like the uh, Heckenblade or whatever the, that yeah, goes across the rear. Heckblende. Yeah. Yeah, but that's a German word. Yeah, but that's just what I call it now because that's the best. It, it's a lot. Easy. I like that more in bar of taillights. Heckblend. Heckblend. Yeah. It it looks really good on the uh, Civic, but yeah, I, I, think I, it's I like the really taillights of those. Um, ninth or whatever generation civic. Yeah, no, that looks really good. I like that. That's so, uh, yeah, I'm pretty stoked. I, I'm not mad about getting that. I wish we got the uh, Kona EV. I think we may, but right. I think it's gonna start with the the Soul. So I don't know if I have a photo of the Kona in here. I actually watched a fully charged on that last night, and that was pretty cool too. Ooh, that one's even racier. That's fancy. I like it. The That's normal one just does not look good. I'm gonna just answer the Kona. That's a Nero EV. Yeah, they're bringing us the Nero as well. I think they all have the same powertrain. There's two optional batteries. One's even cheaper. It's like 45 kilowatts, which is still twice what the Fiat is. So that's the Kona EV. I don't like the front end. I don't. I don't like the cladding. It it doesn't look good. It it needs something up front. So right now it, detected. Yeah. Well, I'm just gonna go ahead and close it then. Yeah. It looks like Voldemort. <laughs> it does. <laughs> like, <laughs> it looks a little better in gray. It needs a grill. <laughs> I prefer the sole, the it, it uh, either, Easter Island it statues. Need, it, yeah, yeah, the the Easter Island faced uh, Kia sole looks really tight. So, well, there you go. There you go. So, <laughs> I think uh, we've reached some uh, astounding conclusions here thus far. We've decided that Brian should get an Aristo, Aristo. for this car. Yep. Um, if you that... are looking for a Toyota Supra for six thousand dollars, you are on crack. Unless um, you get an early third gen. Yes, a very early third gen, and M get it now. Um, or maybe an auto 1J car, if no, you're lucky. won't I, exist. I bet you can get an auto 1J car for 6 Doesn't grand exist. Right now. Does not exist. Um, the Kia Soul <laughs> is actually cool. Yes. Our driver's ed system is broken. And Jeep made us a pickup, which and we don't really care about that much. Yeah, I wish I, I, wish I made a Ute. So, all right. That's... Uh, <laughs> I think just wanted the Cherokee. The, those, you? yes, I want a Cherokee pickup. I just want the XJ <laughs> oh, to come back. Uh, that would be a cool. Yes, one. that'd be very the cool. The current Cherokee, no, no Th That's our bombshell for the episode. Is that che Jeep <laughs> should bring back the XJ Cherokee? Well, thank you very much for listening for our much longer than Monday's episode. Episode. Oh, this isn't that bad. It's only an hour and twenty six minutes. That's I mean, but it's uh, you know it's uh, forty five minutes longer than the last one. Whatever. We so, had, this was basically two whole groups of conversation, so it's fine. Exactly. We can honestly break this into three episodes. We this could, week. but so, we won't. Yeah, we won't. You're saying a really long one. <laughs> I already anyway, don't like editing as it is. So. Exactly. Well, thank you very much for listening, and we'll see you next week. Catch you guys on Monday.